bowing like no other. Now, some of you have gotten a uh, little handout. It looks something like that. Some of you don't because we probably didn't make enough because, you know, I frankly didn't expect to have another large group again. So I, I appreciate your being here and thank you for uh, being here. But what this little thing does is it tries to give you the different periods in history. History is the study of what human beings do chronologically. Okay. Um, so somebody will say, boy, how come you know so many dates? Well, if you don't know your timeline, you're not going to be a very good historian. Because you, you know, there cause and you can't have something that's a cause that occurs after the effect. Okay? It's you gotta know that. So and things change. And this is a convenient way of doing that. Now, if you're gonna study the history of this area, okay, where would you begin? Well, somebody said, how far back would you go? And I said, well. Um, my, my history of Weirton starts with geography. Because you have to understand the geography to understand how that can influence what people do. Okay? I'm not saying that geography determines what people do, but at, when you don't have certain kinds of technology, it certainly influences them. Okay? And you'll see how important that is when we get, in a couple weeks, when we talk about wheeling in this area in the pre-Civil War. Why is it that uh, Virginia was split between East and West? Well, part of that is geography. Not just geography in terms of what crops will grow, but how geography is an impediment to the movement of, of peoples. You know, if, if you go back to the 1960s, back to the administrations of Kennedy and Johnson, one of the things that those administrations tried to do for West Virginia was to put in interstate highways. Prior to 1960, there were no interstate highways in West Virginia. And one of the reasons is that we were so insular that it was difficult for West Virginians to participate until we had those, those kinds of things. That's why, if you've ever wondered, why, why does West Virginia have so many small colleges? Because transportation was so bad, and we had to have them at West Liberty, and Fairmont, and Athens, and Shepherdstown, and Glenville. I've always wanted to know why something was in Glenville. <laughs> Nobody from Glenville. <laughs> because you should never insult, I should never insult people if they're here. You should only insult them if they're gone. I made, years ago, I, I, I made a, uh, had a program over at, uh, at the Independence Hall, and I made some, it was for the B&O Railroad, but it's going into Bel Air, and I made some joke remark, I said, like, who would want to go to Bel Air? You know? and I, was, I was just having fun, and I noticed the guy got up in the back and left. <laughs> and when the program was over and I was walking out, the uh, custodian said, boy, you teed that guy off. <laughs> and I said, really? He said, yeah, he, all I heard him saying is, oh, that damn guy talking about Bel Air. And I said, he went out the door. So I, I, I don't mean to, to do that. Um, so, you know, West Virginia in this, this area um, is an isolated area for a long time. And let me, let me show you what we mean. Jamestown is settled in, and this is our first question of the day, in what year was Jamestown? 1607. Oh, Very good. Okay. Wheeling... Year of founding is given as 1769. So now, would you like to do the math? From Jamestown to Wheeling takes 162 years. Okay? 
When does California become a state? 1850. Okay, so less than 100 years to go, if you're not familiar, it's 2,400 miles from Pittsburgh to San Francisco. From Jamestown to Wheeling, as the crow flies, is fewer than 300. Okay, so how people um, move, where they move, uh, is influenced by lots of different things. Technology is one, um, <coughs> environment is another. If you've ever tried to go through parts of West Virginia, you will know that it's a much more difficult than it is to, let's say, travel across Indiana. Okay? And if you want to appreciate that, uh, see the difference in your gas mileage. <laughs> okay? Uh, and then you can appreciate that. So my point is that the United States is settled for most of our history <clears throat> from east to west, at least for the first couple hundred years. And in the 17th, 16th, 17th and 18th century, that movement is relatively slow. Okay? So that by the time of the American Revolution, by the last quarter of the 18th century, the line of the frontier is right here on the Ohio River. Now, if you have a frontier, you should have a, some, something that suggests it's a frontier. And we do. We have a fort. In fact, in this area, uh, if you've ever looked at um, this little book, which is which is okay, uh, it's it's done by a lawyer. Not, nothing that you know lawyers can write just as well as historians. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I'm serious. I'm serious. Um, but you notice the title: "Every Home a Fort, Every Man a Warrior." There are. Oh, I think I counted them today, 47, 49 forts in this area. Not only Fort Henry, but there's a fort at Beach Bottom. There's a fort in Follinsby. There's a fort out in Eldersville. There's a fort in West Liberty. There's a little fort down in Grave Creek. There's a Holidays Cove fort uh, in what's now Weirton. They're, they're all over the place because this is a frontier. Now. How, how do you explain a frontier to students? And this is the way that I've done it for years. And I want you to imagine the weather chart. And it shows you a map of a coming storm. And they will show you the line of thunderstorms. And the more intense the color, the more intense the storm, okay? And the reason that certain parts of the United States have more thunderstorms and tornadoes than another is that they're a meeting ground between two different kinds of air masses. Warm, moist air from the Gulf, cold, dry air for the, from Canada. And when those two meet, the more, the more different those systems are, the more intense the weather, okay? Now, if you can understand that concept, then listen to this. There are peoples living in this area when people landed from Europe in 1607. They had been on this continent for thousands of years. I just finished a book uh, called 1491, and what I see in, in recent scholarship is when that period is, keeps getting